accomplish first week of practice? Mark, we've got so many places on our team, offensively, defensively, you know, ironically, the place where we have the most experience is special teams. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's where, you know, uh, a lot of our team that is returning from last year, that's, that's where a lot of the, that's where most of them contributed to. So, offensively and defensively, you know, we've got so many vacancies at positions and so many wide open positions. Uh, you know, we're just looking every day to close the gap and narrow in, you know, who the starters are going to be, who the t two deep is going to be. I mean, there, there's many cases we don't have a two deep. So the first week is really all working towards trying to determine, you know, who our top two guys are. You know, it's not just top one. You've got so many freshmen that are going to be playing. I mean, that's that. There's there's no way around that. You know, our scholarship, you know, count right now is low, low, low 70s. So if you do the math, a bunch of them are going to be playing. So, uh, which is no problem. You know, we're going to play the ones that obviously we think have a chance to give us the best chance to win. But that's what we're trying to do this week. By the end of this week, we want to say, look, how far are we in trying to figure out or trying to solve the problem of our 2D? You know, after you were on ESPN today, uh, Tom Lugan Bill made, made, made the statement that it would be a monumental accomplishment if y'all went 6-6. Six and six. Does, does, does that trouble you at all to hear that kind of talk, or do, does it maybe take some pressure off when you like hearing that kind of talk? Philip, if, if I'm not mistaking, this time last year, nobody used Auburn and championship in the same sense. So that's what makes college football great, as I said today. Uh, everybody's got opinions. And, you know, everybody loves this time of the year to predict who's going to do what. So that's all good. Uh, it's just I don't have the time or the energy to worry about it. Do you all have, as, as early as it is, can you tell a little bit of a difference in you guys just for this conditioning or focus? Because they know they got a shot to get on the field. They're not thinking red shirt. Did you, can you see that well, in the reports? Well, you know, one thing we talked about with our young guys, we talked about it all summer with, you know, guys individually. Uh, and we talked about it last night. And we, we hit it again today. We did not recruit our freshmen to watch. We did, we did not recruit them to come in here and watch. We did not recruit them to come in here and observe everybody else play. We recruited them to come in and play. We told them that when we recruited them, and here they are. So I, I think it's understood, not just from the recruiting process, but now that they're here and they've been around it and, and they see, you know, what numbers are and who, who's at their positions that they got to beat out, they understand, wow, this is real. I've got a chance to play here now. And that is our expectation. Not one of them are we saying, look, we're gonna, you're redshirted till you prove you can play. It's the opposite. You can play until we just feel like there's no way and then we redshirt you. And that, that's, that's how we see it. And that's how we have to see it right now with, with the numbers the way they are. Gene, you said. Just, just talk about. The camp for you. Um, what are you looking to, to improve on? What are you What are you hoping to uh, to show? Um, I mean, I, I have one goal: um, is to become the starter. And to do that, I have to gain Coach Chiswick's and Coach Malzahn's trust. So that is that's my only only goal. That, I mean, that's it. My whole life is right now. I mean, 20 years of doing what I love to do, and I mean, it's it's all right now. You know, now or never. So uh, that's all I'm focused on: is gaining their trust. However, I got to do that. Do you think you put more pressure on yourself by thinking that way? That it's you kind of all in I would. I wouldn't say. I mean, I mean, if you, I guess, if you think about it like that and how, but it's just like a mindset that you that you got to have to start, and that's something I didn't realize. Uh, you know, when I got here, and my even last year, um, and and I feel like I'm not there yet, obviously, but just becoming, just knowing where I got to go now, I mean, that's just something you don't think about. You don't put extra stress on, you don't get that, you don't get that nervous. Like I said, it's a confidence that you have, and, you know, I don't even think about that, really. I mean, even with the ESPN crews here, it's, I, I hadn't really thought about it. I mean, so this is good for me, though. I need the, I need the pressure. Is that different than the ESPN guys being here, all, being wired up like that? Yeah, it's, it's very different, you know. It, not saying that I say anything wrong, but it still makes me think three times about what I say. I'm just trying to keep quiet. You know, normally I'm 
have a little break, I joke around with somebody. I'm just kind of like, hmm, what am I about to say? You don't have to think about it a few times, but it's, it's different. Um, I thought it was pretty funny how Coach Malzahn just kind of mentioned it to us casually as we were leading last night through the walkthroughs. He's just like, yeah, and by the way, SPN's going to be here, video, <laughs> everything y'all do, the whole count. I was like, what? Like, you know, it's, he just mentions it so casually or whatever, but, you know, it's uh, – it's, uh, it's pretty cool if you think about it, but that's what I'm trying not to do is, you know, think too much into it. I don't want, you know, think about the guys. And the fact that I have a mic is what scares me the most, though. So it's pretty cool, though. Not maybe potentially starting in front of 90,000 people just having a microphone. Yeah, um, that's just something I'm going to cross that bridge when I get there. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, I mean, there's times I do think about it for sure. And uh, that's not, like I'm saying, this is, it's good for me to have – I mean, even this, um, just, just stuff for me to handle, um, you know, especially ESPN crew like that. I mean, you know, how much you want to say you don't bother somebody, it's still something you have to, like, handle. And, uh, you know, it's good for me. I need that because, you know, I've obviously never played more than in front of 3,000 people, you know. It looked like he was, Malzahn was being pretty hands-on with you and stuff like that. I mean, was he getting, I guess not really in your face, but was he being really, you know, kind of, I guess attentive to detail with you. In his oh practice. yeah, he's definitely. I mean, that's part of our offense. We have to be very detailed and uh, just. So if you do the details wrong, he'll tell you about it. And uh, I definitely need to improve. And he just every time I messed up, he would just tell me what to do and where I needed to be. I know you've probably seen him do that with other quarterbacks a lot. Is it different when you're the guy he's saying it to? It, it definitely is different. I mean, you get a different. You get a more like emotional feeling about it and more emotional attachment to the game and. It helps you uh, want to work harder, definitely, whenever he gets up in your face like that. So how familiar are you with this offense coming in? Um, I, I knew a little bit of it just because it's uh, kind of the carryover from Shiloh to here, but uh, I definitely have a lot to learn. I mean, the playbook is a lot thicker, a lot more more advanced, so I'm definitely going to try to get in the playbook a lot. How much does it help you, though, that you, that you kind of have that base to, to work with? I think it helped me a whole lot. Just the way Coach Floyd taught it was real similar, so kind of the, the technicalities that he uses, kind of the phrases. I knew that when I got here, so I think that put me a uh, step ahead when I got here. Now, you've known Coach Malzahn since you were you know, like in middle school or something like that, right? Right around then. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, so how much does that familiarity help with you and just, you know, knowing him since you were young? And all yeah, that? It definitely helps because, I mean, whenever you have a guy there that you don't know just yelling at you and telling you what to do, yeah, you really don't know, like, how to respond. But since I've known Coach Malzahn for a while, I know. He knows what he's talking about, and whatever he says, that's that's what's best, and that's what I need to do. Yeah, what's eighth, your? Was it eighth, eighth grade or so when you met um, him? I I met him in seventh grade, and then I think he started recruiting me around eighth, <laughs> ninth grade. Cal, talk about where you feel, how, how good a chance you feel like you got to really make a move. Well, I mean, I think it's even right now since it's the first day of camp, and in the end, it's unbiased, the best part will play, but I definitely saw where Barry and Clint were, and we're kind of where I need to be, so. There, I, you can definitely tell at practice that they're a step ahead of me, so I definitely need to kind of get in the playbook and learn a little bit more and kind of just get more comfortable with the system. Was it more that way maybe than you expected it to be? No, I mean, they've been here for three years, so they know the offense, and I mean, they're really good quarterbacks. And some people, like, don't think of, think of them like that, but uh, people don't see how talented Barrett and Clint actually are. So just, I think they'll be surprised. Talk about how 